Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that the village voice called Enchanting. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cody, and if you're like me, you've always wanted to go back to the carefree days of the Second World War. And now you can in board game form, with Osprey Games' Escape from Colditz. In Escape from Colditz from Osprey Games, two to six players take on the role of either the German guards or the various nationalities who are trying to escape from this dreaded German castle. Now, this game was originally published in 1973, and this is kind of a uh, somewhat of an update, though, as I understand, the rules haven't changed too much. They do uh, have the, the kind of newer rules and then the, the basic rules in the back of the book, and there's a little thing, a few things are streamlined, but they haven't overall changed a lot of what is going on here. So if you're familiar with the original game, this one will seem fairly similar. Essentially, the game board is a map of Colditz Castle. You kind of have the, the inner courtyard, the outer courtyard, and then, of course, beyond the wall. Now... You have German guards, who are the black pieces, and then you have, depending on the number of players, you have different nationalities. You don't have specific nationalities, like British, American, Russian, I mean, you assume they are, but they're not labeled, necessarily labeled as such, they're just kind of generic. But you have your color, so that's what your nationality is, and you're trying to escape from the castle. Now, you start the game in the center of the inner courtyard. This is the apple, and while you're in the apple, you're always safe. The guards can't touch you there, you're safe, you're doing what you need to do. Now, the rest of the inner courtyard, a guard cannot arrest you unless you are holding qu equipment. If you have an equipment card, they can come up to you, arrest you, and confiscate the equipment card. If you are outside of the inner courtyard, you can always be arrested. Now, essentially, how the game works is every prisoner, at the beginning of their turn, they get an escape kit, and they're going to need that to try to get out. What they're trying to do is escape this different targets that are just outside the board. They have spaces on the board, and on the prisoner's turn, they roll two die. You roll two die, you add the sum together, and that is how many spaces you can move. Roll and move, right? Now here's the thing. If you roll doubles, you get to roll again. If you roll doubles then, you get to roll again, but then that's it. Um, but also, too, rolling doubles can help you with some other things as well. For instance, you can get prisoners out of uh, solitary confinement when you roll doubles. Now, also, on your roll, if you let roll less than five, you get an opportunity card. Now, an opportunity card are just going to be little things that help you and, and, and give you a little bit of an advantage in the game. Now, what you're trying to do as a prisoner is assemble the tools you'll need to escape, because around the castle, there are various windows you can go out of, but they require drops in rope, 30-foot lengths of rope or 60 foot or what have you so you need to be able to get over all of those spaces uh in rope in order to get your your escape plan so you got to kind of plot where do i want to get out but there's some places you need a key to get through some places you have to show german papers to get through some places you have to use wire cutters to get through there's tunnels there's all sorts of things here in this game that you're going to have to need to collect stuff for tunnels actually i think come with the opportunity cards but what you're going to do here is there's different rooms in the castle. You know, you got kitchen and chapel and what have you. And each of these rooms have different items you need. So if you ever have two, uh, two of your, your, your meeples in the same room or in different rooms that have the same item, then you can essentially get that card and add that to your equipment list. But now, of course, the guard is watching you because you've got equipment. Once you've collected everything that, that you think you'll need, you pray for a big, strong roll, and you get out, you get over the walls, you get you know cut through the wire, through the tunnels, you, you get out of the castle, and you try to make it to one of the escape points. Now, once you get out, you can use an escape card for your first guy to get out. Now, if you've got two guys that are escaping right next to each other, you can use that to get them out. Now, with movement, too, I should point out, you don't just move one guy the space you rolled. You can divide it up any way. So if you were to roll 12, uh, you could move one guy 12, or you could move one guy 1, one guy 11. You could move, you know, five of your guys, two each, maybe one some more. So you know what I mean. You can divide movement up anyway. So you, theoretically, you could get two guys right to one of the exits and escape both of them together. 
And that's the goal of the game, is to get two people out of the courtyard. Or out of the castle, rather. Now, the problem is, if you just get one guy out, your escape kit's gone, you have to assemble a new escape kit. So you have to put four people in different rooms to get the escape kit. But the escape kit's not like equipment, you can just hang on to that. Once every prisoner has had a chance to go, then the security officer goes, the German goes. And the German, he is going to go ahead, or she, as the case may be, is going to go ahead, and they too are going to roll the dice and move their guards around to the different spots to try to arrest various prisoners. Now, they start out in the barracks, but they can essentially, for one movement point, teleport to any of these black spaces on the board, and from there they can move out, and these are guard posts that they can move out and try to confiscate, uh, arrest and confiscate equipment from, from the, from the uh, players. Now, if they make an arrest, the player that is arrested goes back to the apple, or pardon me, the player goes to the solitary confinement, and the German that made the arrest actually goes back to the Commandant's office, so he's not going to reappear that same turn. Now, just like the prisoners, if the security officer, the German, rolls die that add up to less than five, they're going to get a security card. They're going to get their own card that's going to make things a lot easier for them. Ways to manipulate the prisoners, arrest prisoners on flimsy pretexts, all sorts of things to in order to give them an advantage during the game. Now, the first prisoner player to get two of his meeples to escape Castle Kolditz wins Escape from Kolditz. So I've got to tell you, this is a game that's been on my radar for a while now, and I've been super excited. Again, um, if you know the show, you know me, you know I've, I've got a master's degree in European history in Nazi Germany. I studied in Berlin. I'm fascinated with World War II. I think it's absolutely just something that totally captures my imagination, and I love learning about it. And this game... You know, I, I heard about it, and I was just like, oh, I want to play that, I want to play that. I saw a picture of the map at one point, and I'm like, oh, I want to play that, I want to play that. So, uh, you know, the good people at Osprey sent this to me to review. So, you know, we're playing it, and you really get a sense of of kind of the, the frustration of trying to um, get everything together and plan your escape and keeping an eye out for the guard. And it's it's a little intense. I mean, you're kind of sweating that, and the guard's got to be on the ball and you've got to you've got to steer clear if you've got equipment and and make a mad dash for it um it's intense it, it's got some intensity to it now the game is because you've got those die rolls and because you've got some of those cards that that quite frankly are fairly powerful there's a lot of luck in this game there is a lot of luck in this game and i'll give you an example first game i was playing um, I had, it had been a while and nobody had actually made it outside of the courtyard yet, but I finally had everything I needed. Well, I go ahead, I spend a rope, I get down off the thing, I spend another rope, I got down off the other thing, and I'm, and, and, and I rolled insane. I rolled like, like 30 something. I kept rolling box cars and then I, I mean, it was just a brilliant roll. And I'm running to the thing, and I got my papers ready, and I'm on the paper spot, and I play my papers. And just as I play my papers, Clarissa, who was the guard, uh, she played a card she had that said, if if a prisoner plays papers, arrest them. So it was just kind of, oh, ah, man, I planned, and I worked that out, and you just played a card that just completely negated everything I did. Okay, okay, all right. Well, a couple turns later, my guy's in solitary on the outside solitary. There's an outside solitary, there's an inside solitary. I'm on the outside solitary. And it suddenly occurs to me that I, you know, I was able to get some more papers real quick, and I got a key. And it occurred to me, if I can get that guy out, I can send him through the, uh, through the door of the key, and I can send him through the, 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 the papers thing. I'm like, great, I can do this. Once again, I rolled amazing. I rolled just like, you know, 20-something. I mean, a really good roll. And so I move my guy out. I move him to, to, to the door. I play my lock card, and she plays a card that says anybody that uses a, a lock and key card is arrested. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. And that was disappointing. And it was disappointing because there was nothing I could do that mitigated it. There was no way to fight it. And it was purely a result of chance of the cards she drew. And I had worked, I had strategized to get the cards I needed to get out. And yet it just seemed it was, ah, it was too much chance. And you could argue, too, it was way too much chance that I was getting these massive killer rolls there. Um, If I hadn't gotten those rolls, could I have made it, you know? So there's a lot of chance, a lot of chance. And I got to tell you, I don't mind games with a lot of chance if, 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 if the strategy you can devise and come up with can still work its way through there. If chance can nibble away at it and hurt it, 
but but you've still got a shot. And I felt like here with the all the chance that was going, it just it just kind of negated the strategies you were coming up with. And it wasn't just me; it was uh, the other other people I played this with have kind of noted that as well. Um, so that was disappointing. Now the game two is longish. It's you know you're looking two plus hours if you got a lot of people playing, which I have in the games I've played. And so it's just, for that long a game, to have that much chance, it just, oh man, alive. Now I gotta tell you, the production here is beautiful. This is just a brilliantly produced game. It looks great. And all of uh, uh, Osprey Games stuff look great. They've got this like care package. It looks like a first aid care package, and they've uh, they've got uh, little boxes like cigarette things for cards. They've got a a, 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 a the bottom of the liner is kind of a hand drawn map thing. I mean, it just looks the map itself, the game board itself is beautiful. The little meeples, you know, arguably could have been better, but they work, they function for what the game is. But you know, it's a brilliant production. It looks brilliant, and I wanted to love this game so much with the theme and with the production. It looked like it was just going to fire on all cylinders, and yet it just doesn't. Now, please don't misunderstand me. There is a lot I like about this game beyond just the theme and beyond just the production levels, which are both great. The game is intense, and you do you do get this this sense of of of, of plotting and escape, and and that is so well done. It's so well done. But that chance just, oh, that hurts it for me a lot. I'm not saying this is a game I would never play again. I I probably will, I'm sure. Um, but I just, at the same time, I just don't know that it's that it's just, it's the game I needed it to be because of that chance. I, I, I can see, I know they talk in the, in the rules a little bit about kind of how there's some, there's some house ruling that happened with the original edition, and I think that would probably work here too. Um... I should also mention there's a great booklet in here on the actual history of, of Cold Its and what happened there, which I think is great. I love it when companies do that. Osprey Games, they did the um, uh, They Come Unseen about the submarines, the NATO submarines and the Soviet submarines, and they had a whole little thing on the history of, of submarine warfare or during the Cold War. Brilliant, and I love that stuff. I think that is so cool because, I'm uh, you know, being a historian, I love games that can that can educate as well as as entertain wanted to love this game and i did not i liked it i i had fun with it but i was really disappointed in it and i don't know because of the length and because of all that chance if this is a game for everybody i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna i'm gonna give this a try it for you buy it i think the strengths of this game will be enough for some people to overlook some of these other aspects of it. I think for a lot of people that like me, that, that, that like more of that strategy, little less chance for the length of the game, I think you, 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 you've got to play it for yourself. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and please remember, we have ways of making you play bot games. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a lot. But technically, you could get out of the closet. And get arrested. I'm just saying. This is a horse cock. <laughs> <laughs>